here at Katmai, we absolutely take your experience and include it in lieu of a degree. We consider the candidate holistically. I think it just comes back to being employee-centered. We like to look at the whole package. Welcome to Security Cleared Jobs, Who's Hiring and How, the podcast for cleared professionals looking for new opportunities and career advice. We go behind the scenes with recruiters and hiring managers from leading cleared employers to uncover the information you need to make a smart career move. Get ready for insights from this week's guest and your hosts, Kathleen Smith and Rachel Bozeman. Hello, everyone. It's Kathleen Smith from ClearJobs.net. I'm back in the studio again with my fabulous co-host, Rachel. How are you doing today? You know, even better after that introduction. We are so excited to be here today and get to learn with one of our cleared employers. Tell us more, Kathleen. Joining us on the show today is Taylor Hayes, Talent Acquisition Assistant Manager with Cut My Government Services. Taylor, we are so glad to have you here today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Rachel, you want to kick us off? Of course I do. And we like to start at the beginning. So Taylor, we would love to hear a little bit about your career journey and how you ended up where you are now. I started my recruiting journey in Teach for America when I was in college. And then I always like to say I recruited myself right into teaching. And then I recruited right out of it after a year. You know, teaching takes that special person. And that was not for me. So I jumped right back into recruiting. I did nonprofit work for several years. And it just got to the point where the company that I was with didn't meet my needs. It was just the the time to separate. I came across Katmai online, applied. They have excellent cultural values that I hope I get a chance to talk about. And I've been here and I've, I've loving it ever since. That's great. So Katmai Government Services is owned by an elastic, excuse me, Alaska Native <laughs> Village Corporation. What type of work are you doing in the cleared community? We over here at Katmai, we are a part of a larger corporation known as Uzinki. And then there's Katmai underneath that. And so some of the things that we get to do specifically within the cleared community, number one, we are providing clearances, which a lot of companies expect you to come aboard with a clearance. And don't get me wrong, that is preferred. Most of our jobs do require a secret clearance or above, but we absolutely do assist with getting a clearance. And I think that's one of the things that sets us apart. So here we are all about making dreams come true. And one of the things you said at the head of this conversation was that you were excited to talk about the culture. So would you tell us a little bit about how being part of the Alaska Native Village Corporation, how that really impacts your company culture and what makes you special? What makes you unique? Yeah. So one thing that's very unique about Katmai is that we don't have your typical board members. We have shareholders and for us, our shareholders are the indigenous people from that Alaskan community, from the Uzinki community, from the Katmai community, and not just them, but also their descendants and their spouses. We have such a unique culture because of that, that heritage that has been brought into our company that I just absolutely fell in love with. I mean, our commitment to being different, being better, being employee centered, being stewards of our environment, being community oriented, I think is really what sets our culture apart. We care about our shareholders, but we care about our employees just as much. That's really a unique perspective. So let's dive down into it. What types of cleared positions are you hiring for at Katmai? I have more than enough to share. An injury epidemiologist, and I'm just going to run through the list, y'all. An injury epidemiologist, a biomechanical research engineer, an application programmer, a public health communication specialist, a warehouse specialist, cybersecurity analyst, help desk technician. We are also looking for registered nurses in Colorado Springs, and we are looking for utilization management nurses. We are looking for orthopedic nurses. We are looking for LPNs. That probably encompasses most of them. <laughs> you did mention there that some were in Colorado Springs. Where are all your positions located? Oh, great question. So uh, we are contracted with the DOD primarily, 
as well as the CDC. And most of those positions are actually remote over on the CDC side, which is nice. And we are contracted, goodness, Fort Novacell, Alabama. That is Southern Alabama. We also have Quantico. We have Kirtland Air Force Base right outside of Albuquerque, Colorado Springs. We have all four bases in that area. We're primarily looking for nurses at the U.S. Air Force Academy and further down at um, Evans Army Community Center as well. So that's where we primarily need our registered nurses. And then we do have a couple of uh, physician positions out in Keesler and pretty much the rest of the tech ones are remote. That's awesome to hear about the remote positions for tech. One of the things that I will say that sets us apart as well in our position uh, is that we absolutely do accept if you have a degree. Degrees, excellent. Everybody accepts that. But I will also say that if you are someone who has pivoted in their career, thinking about moving in a different direction with their career, we absolutely love certification. Certifications plus experience is at this point in the tech world, it's, it's almost become the norm. You know, Google has their uh, coding academies. I mean, we absolutely accept those as well. Certifications, experience and degrees. So some of our roles that we are looking for in tech, um, in addition to the ones I mentioned, including the cybersecurity analyst, because that is a hot one. We also are looking for an informatics specialist, a configuration manager, a cryptologic technician, say that three times fast, uh, software engineers. We need a couple of you guys, as well as uh, Python developers and help desk analysts. So those positions are remote. They do require a secret clearance for those. So in particular, you mentioned those software. I mean, you mentioned a whole lot of positions, which all sound incredible. And some of them are a little harder to didn't roll off the tongue quite as easy. But uh, one of them that you did mention was the software engineering. So let's talk a little bit more about just that flexibility between kind of what you mentioned, the education and what that work experience, how do you kind of pivot between those? I know you mentioned certifications, but let's talk a little bit about that experience and education related to the software engineering role. Yeah. So for our software engineers, if you are fresh out of school, out of your bachelor's program, absolutely apply. Definitely will accept you. However, if you are somebody who is 10 years into this, you know it like the back of your hand. You've been doing it. This is a this is in your career, but maybe you didn't go to school for it. Maybe you went to school for journalism, or maybe you didn't end up going to college at all. Here at CatMy, we absolutely take your experience and include it in lieu of a degree. So for our software engineers in particular, if you have three years of experience or more and you don't have a degree, please apply. Please, please, please apply. We consider the candidate holistically. I think it just comes back to being employee centered. We like to look at the whole package, and I just think a lot of companies only focus on that hard degree, which which is important. You worked hard for it, and a lot of people paid a lot of money for those degrees. However, the degree is not the end-all, be-all, you know? And if you're in groups, if you're a part of um, any engineering professional groups as well, absolute, absolutely, absolutely consider the package, the candidate package as a whole. It's nice to hear that we have an employer that has some flexibility and, as you said, really looks at the candidate from a holistic standpoint. And talking about other holistic components, you have a nice success story about hiring folks at the end of their five-year contract. Tell us a little bit about that success and how you brought it home. Yes. So we were at the end of our contract with this particular group and we were at the end but it was not the end so what that means is when you have vacancies we we still got to fill them the difficult thing about that is like hey i'm going to hire you but uh, in a couple months you're not going to you're not going to really see me anymore right and it's like how do you cross that bridge with a candidate to get them on board catmai we just believe in being transparent and integrity is a one of one of our major values and i had to use that when i was outreaching i had applicants i was sourcing and as i was calling in that very first initial call i was transparent from the jump i said hey thank you for your application i want to let you know right now that 
we're nearing the end of our contract with, with these guys. And I would definitely love the opportunity to continue this conversation further. However, I'm setting this precedent now. So that way later you don't feel bamboozled. The fact that you do get hired and, and Kat might just ups and leaves you, you know? And I think setting that expectation right up front and letting the candidate decide if they want to move forward or not is what benefited me in getting those three positions filled. Now, I will be honest, I did have a lot of people back out, you know, (laughs) but for the three folks I got on board, they told me that they appreciated my honesty up front and they rolled with it, came on board. And and luckily, by the goodness of God, we were able to, to end up keeping that contract in the end. So, you know, I didn't even have to go through that, but (laughs) I really will say that integrity and that transparency right up front is definitely what sealed the deal. Honesty is always the best policy. So they say. (laughs) (laughs) So you mentioned something about the whole candidate package. It's kind of understanding all of the skills and talents. And so speaking of the whole candidate package, sometimes that package includes maybe a spouse or a significant other. And I've heard that maybe you've had a little bit of success with assisting those military spouses in finding different careers and different jobs there. Tell me more. Absolutely. I'm going to pick on Colorado Springs again, because like I said, there are four bases out there. And that means that there is a lot of movement. Families are constantly coming in and coming out. And military spouses, they're along for the ride. And we get a lot of spouses that are our ends. And they're moving from location to location every couple years, and they essentially have to start over, right? It's hard because your significant other is walking right into a new job, but you're having to start from scratch. And we understand that. So uh, in Colorado Springs, we have a very, very vibrant military spouse community. When we get word of families coming in, they are a part of our military spouse network immediately. And so we get a lot of referrals just through that network by itself. Hey, so-and-so is PCSing. Their wife is a ERRN, and I know they're looking for one at Carson. Absolutely, send them our way. I will absolutely say it's probably been one of the best recruitment efforts and the easiest recruitment efforts because they come in, they connect with the nurses that we already have, you know, boots on the ground. We get the referrals and then we, you know, we just kind of hire them. And they get to one, they're familiar with that community coming into it. And two, they're within that same community as their significant other, where they're at home and they're comfortable. And in a sense, the whole family is provided for. That's really amazing. And being a, a veteran-known firm here at ClearJobs.net, we always, always make sure that the military spouses are taken care of. We actually have several employees, including myself, who are our military spouses. So we, hey. on behalf of our community... I thank you. So I understand in our pre-call, you had some recommendations for job seekers about the power of saying thanks. What is your recommendation? Call me old school, but you know, I think a thank you note goes a long, long way. A thank you email, right? You're not doing snail mail anymore, but a thank you email. If you had an excellent phone screen, if you had a great Zoom interview, Please just send just a quick thank you email. Um, even if you don't have the, the interviewee's contact information, email the recruiter, ask them to pass it along. Hey, I thoroughly enjoyed my interview with Cindy the other day. I appreciate the opportunity to learn more about your company. Boom, send. It's, it's so simple and it really does go a long way. Okay, so honesty and thank you are always the best. Yes. So see, <laughs> see, look what you're getting today, friends. Bonuses, <laughs> tips, tricks, all the good stuff here. So since you're so good at tips and tricks, what are some tips that you would recommend on how they can improve their job search? Um, please be patient. Please be patient. We all know how our government operates. Just be patient, y'all. Just be a little patient. And then attend these job fairs. We have great job fairs. Clear Jobs has great job fairs and I will be there. So come sign up, participate. I'd love to meet you. <laughs> Always love a little plug for our Clear Job Fairs. Yes, we, we do have wonderful events and everyone has a grand old time there. So other than seeing you at one of our Clear Job Fairs, how else may our listeners get in touch with you? You can email me at jhayes at 
You can follow me on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Taylor Hayes, you can Google me and you will find me. There's there's not many of me out there. (laughs) Unlike me, a lot of Smiths are out there. It has been an absolute pleasure spending a little time with you this afternoon. Thanks for the tips, the insights, telling us a little bit more about the organization and how our wonderful, beautiful listeners could be part of it. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Take care. Katmai is a different kind of defense contractor as an Alaska Native Village Corporation. They have shareholders, which really impact how their culture is deployed, produced, engaged. They look at the candidate on a holistic component. Rachel, what did you learn today? You know, I really appreciated just the ability that they're looking at the candidate, like you said, that holistic way, and not just trying to compartmentalize them or put them in these boxes of, did you check all of the boxes? But rather, is there the potential? Are you doing the things? Do you have related skills, adjacent type of experience? And being able to really marry that into the roles. And it's just refreshing to see um, an organization that's willing to appreciate people for where they're at and put them where they can be. You know what else is amazing, Kathleen? I know you know, but for those out there, it's you, all of you listening, you and you and you and you and you, and we appreciate that you listened all the way to the end of the podcast, and hopefully you learned something amazing. So you know what? Get out there, friends, and remember to follow our show so you don't miss one, not one single episode. But before you go, if you're looking for more information on our upcoming events, on our featured employers, or more tips on your clear job search. Definitely follow our LinkedIn company page or subscribe to our newsletter. Bye-bye. Till next time.